there's a running theme with the villain scene in Batman the Animated Series and the follow-up show, The New Batman Adventures, around identity, the roles we each play in society, and what it can do to us when we lose that core part of ourselves. Sure, not every villain is driven by a deep pain brought about by their loss of self, but there are enough of them in Batman the Animated Series. The Clock King, Clayface, Baby Doll, and Two-Face to name but a few. However, there's one villain I want to talk about from the new Batman Adventures episode, Mean Seasons, an often overlooked semi-original character whose issues with her identity and her place in society result in her adopting a new powerful villainous identity. Let's talk about Calendar Girl. To kick things off, let's address the character's origins. While Paige Monroe is technically an original character created specifically for the new Batman adventures, she bears a strong resemblance to two historical Batman villains, the Mannequin and Calendar Man. So before going into depth on Calendar Girl, let's start off by looking at these two characters that inspired her. Now of the two villains, Calendar Man is probably the most well-known. If you're aware of the character these days, then you probably know that he commits crimes based around national holidays. Christmas, Easter, and everybody's favorite, St. Swithin's Day. I don't even know if I said that correctly. But in his first appearance, 1958's Detective Comics 259, he commits crimes based on the seasons. In this issue, he wore several costumes, each based on one of the four seasons, and teased a fifth season while committing a series of daring robberies. Like many costumed villains that target Gotham City, the Calendar Man couldn't resist leaving a clue to his identity in an effort to prove that he was smarter than Batman. The aforementioned fifth season referred to the Indian fifth season, Monsoon Season. The Calendar Man was performing as Maharaja the Magician, who was advertised as only being in Gotham for five days. So you see, Indian season, five days, white guy magician with an Indian name. It's not the best mystery, but what are you going to do? In his second appearance, some 20 years later in Batman 312, the calendar man returned and pledged to successfully commit a robbery inspired by the name for each day of the week. Monday, themed after the moon. Tuesday, themed after the Norse god of war, Tyr. Wednesday, themed after Odin. Thursday, themed after the Norse god Thor. Friday, themed after the Norse goddess Frigga. Saturday, themed after the Roman god Saturn. And Sunday, the day of rest, the perfect time for him to skip town with all his loot. The Calendar Man would also debut his more well-known red and white calendar-themed costume in this issue, complete with a cape labelled with all the different days of the year. The Calendar Man would make a handful of other appearances over the decades, but frankly they're not particularly significant. He would go on to be reimagined as a Hannibal Lecter-style serial killer in The Long Halloween, and that interpretation of the character seems to have stuck ever since then. But that was after B-Test started airing, so it's not really relevant to this video. The second villain that seems to have inspired the Calendar Girl is the Mannequin. Now, the Mannequin has only appeared in one story, 1981's Detective Comics 506 and 507. A glamorous model and upcoming actress known only as Miranda was caught in a horrific fire, which Batman rescued her from. Upon first glance, it was nothing more than an unfortunate traffic accident. But upon closer inspection, Batman realized that a bomb had been planted in Miranda's car. Passing the evidence to the fire department, Batman set off on his merry way, leaving them to solve the mystery, as Miranda's broken body was taken away to the burn clinic. Jump forward 10 months, and a prominent fashion designer has been found murdered. While on a night out on the town, Bruce Wayne witnesses another designer being brutally murdered by a statuesque woman with an impossibly strong grip. As Batman, he confronts her, and in the struggle pulls off her dress, easy now, to find that this woman is wearing a gold-plated full body suit that hides her features. The suit contains powerful motors that increase her speed and strength to the point that Batman is no match for her. We later learn that the mannequin is Miranda, whose body is now covered with burns, and she seeks revenge on the designers she believed attempted to kill her. Batman is able to deduce her next target, as he was the designer of the dress that she had left behind. So there really was a reason to pull it off, not just because Batman's a horn dog. And when confronted by the mannequin, the designer confesses his crimes. Much like a good BTAS episode, the story ends with both the mannequin and her would-be victim weeping profusely while Batman stands over them, ready to make them face justice. This now brings us to Calendar Girl, Paige Monroe. Right off the bat, her name evokes the classic beauties Betty Page and Marilyn Monroe. Much like the Calendar Man, her crimes are based on specific holidays in the calendar, and like the mannequin, she is a former model that was cast aside due to a change in her looks. Although, in the Calendar Girl's case, the change was no way near as dramatic. Paige had been one of Gotham's most desirable models, however, when she hit 30 years old, work started to dry up, leaving her feeling abandoned and unloved. 
Rumours began to circulate of her destroying her face through plastic surgery in an attempt to reclaim her lost youth. Now, with nothing left to lose, she dons the emotionless pale mask of the Calendar Girl and seeks revenge on the designer and executives that spurned her. Of course, the irony is that, while Paige considers herself hideous and disfigured, in reality she's still a beautiful woman with lots to offer the world. The sad fact is that she places too much stock in the opinions of other people. She only feels validated as a person when she's on a pedestal and people admire her. Without the limelight, she doesn't know what to do with herself. She's another soul in Gotham City that has been chewed up and spat out by the entertainment industry. Like Matt Hagen and Mary Dahl before her, Paige Monroe defines herself by the way that other people see her. The moment she falls out of the spotlight, she wilts and crumbles. Note that Paige is a strong, capable figure as the calendar girl. She's fast and crafty, able to pull off successful kidnappings despite Batman's best efforts. But the moment she takes off that mask, she becomes melancholic. It's the mask that gives her the confidence to enact her revenge on the people that she feels wronged her. Without it, she feels useless and ugly. It's clear that she shouldn't need the mask, but she still uses it as a crutch. And I just want to call out the fact that her henchmen are essentially himbo Chippendales, which is an amusing twist on the usual trope of a villain being backed up by sexy henchwomen. Of course, these henchmen are absolutely useless. Batman is able to dispose of them very quickly with very little effort. Similarly, Calendar Girl is defeated after a projected image of herself burns up, representing her fear of disfigurement or ugliness. This physical manifestation of her internalised view of herself throws her off, allowing Batman to tie her up. It wasn't exactly a tough fight. When Calendar Girl is arrested, Bullock unmasks her, sending her into a frenzy. She literally cannot cope with people seeing her as she truly looks, even though she's still a beautiful woman. In her own eyes, without that mask, she's a pathetic, ugly loser that no one will ever care about. This really highlights how fickle the beauty and entertainment industries are. Paige was still a beautiful woman, even after her supposed botched surgeries. As Batman notes, she still looked young, even when she was the same age as him. This entire episode acts as a criticism of the entertainment industry. The designers and executives show no loyalty to Paige, dumping her in pursuit of the ever-elusive youth market. The sleazy agent tries to force himself on a young aspirational actress in his office. And then there's the cynical, soulless TV studio's output. Yes, we're supposed to laugh at how awful shows like Teen Cop and Malibu Vets are, but they are not far removed from the crap studios pump out even to this day. And I have to wonder if this episode was a cathartic exercise for the team, giving them the opportunity to take out some of their frustrations with the studio executives and their banal suggestions dragging the overall quality of the programs down. Yes, I still think that the studio mandate to include Batgirl and Robin in every episode hurt the show, and I'll never change my mind about that. And these executives are utterly pathetic. They try to buy their way out of their predicament with no consideration for each other. Donna Day offers to pay the henchman to let her go, but only her, while Barkley counters her offer to let him go instead. Why didn't they pool their resources to buy freedom for the both of them? The thought doesn't even cross their minds, they're so pathetic and self-serving. I almost wish that Calendar Girl did get her way. This episode also shines a spotlight on the fragile, egocentric people that the industry builds up, only to knock them down when they're past their arbitrary sell-by date. It's a ruthless business with no place for loyalty or friendship. Everything pales in pursuit of the almighty dollar. Of course, the pressures around beauty and body image are felt by people in all walks of life. It's not just people in the entertainment industry, especially in this modern era of social media and the constant comparison to other people's lives. I don't want to get too preachy, but I think characters like Mary Doll, Matt Hagen, Oswald Cobblepot and Paige Monroe could teach us a thing or two about human worth and how we should be treating each other. You don't have to be the most beautiful person, the strongest person, or the most intelligent person to have value. Your waist size doesn't determine your worth as a human being. Just because you're getting on in years, that doesn't mean that your voice should not be heard. The Calendar Girl only makes one proper appearance in the DC Animated Universe, but I think it's a very impactful one that gives us a lot to think about. All right, lecture over. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. You know how YouTube works. And if you have the means, feel free to throw a few bucks my way with the super thanks button because it really helps. This video was made because you, the viewers, voted for her in a poll. And next time I'll be back with a video looking at Commissioner James Gordon. See you then.